Hey Keto Sisters, I love today's topic about um, getting our mindset shifted to realizing that fat is actually good for our body and will help us to burn fat and that our brain needs fat in order to operate at its optimal capacity. Uh, I have three teenage girls and it has been really difficult these last couple years to try to help them to see that fat is actually good for you. Um, it's still a work in progress because I think like so many of us, they associate eating fat with being fat. It's a complete paradigm shift. And I love the visual of the food pyramid, flipping the food pyramid because it's the total opposite of what we have been taught for years. Um, so if you go from this course to our challenge group from Keto Curious to Keto Confident, we actually spend an entire week talking about fat and all that it does for your body. So I hope that you'll join us there um, once you are finished with this course, but you have lots that you'll get to enjoy um, in what Rebecca shares in the video and in the email that you get. Thanks. We're the Keto Sisters. I'm Bridget. And I'm Rebecca. And we're here to share with you our recipe for abundant life. Doing the keto lifestyle can be hard by yourself. So we have created a community of people that will support each other. We're gonna show you small changes made consistently can have a huge impact. Right, can you imagine cookies without baking soda, or salt? Add, Add some teamwork. teamwork. And then we sweeten our group with encouragement. Good job, Bridget. Thanks. Fat is an important part of the keto lifestyle and it's really what makes that lifestyle unique. In the same way, grace is an important part of our community and really makes the keto systems extra special. Another important part of our community is that we lead with education or education. And our community would not be complete without a little bit of fun and a little bit of nutty. And although our Keto Sisters community is based on friendship and grace, we also add a little heat to help you become the best version of yourself. Life, like cookies, is best enjoyed together. I told you a little bit about my story. So I would love it if in the comments below, you would tell me a little bit about you. I would love to know where you're watching these videos from. Um, and just a little bit about your journey. So you could tell me if you've been doing the keto diet or a lifestyle for a while. Um, maybe you've just been kind of dabbling in it. Maybe you just heard about it. Um, I just kind of want to know where you're coming from. In addition to that, I would also like to know where you're going. Like, what are your goals? A lot of people are attracted to the keto diet for fat loss, which can be amazing, but that's really only the tip of the iceberg. And some quick reminders. I'm not a dietitian or nutritionist. I'm not a medical professional. I'm just a mom and a fitness instructor who has become passionate about the keto lifestyle because of the difference that it's made in my life over the past three and a half years. And so I just like to share what I've learned. I've done a lot of reading. I've gone to a lot of conferences, done a lot of listening to podcasts, um, just kind of exploring this. This was not anything that I'd ever really heard of before or really knew about. It wasn't anything I learned about in school. It wasn't anything that we talked about at the gyms. So it's been a process for me. Um, learning about this lifestyle over the past three and a half years. And I would just like to help you accelerate your journey um, by sharing what I've learned over those past three and a half years. Now the keto diet has gotten a lot of press lately. A lot of people are attracted to it because of the weight loss component. But did you know that the keto diet has been around for a long time and for almost a hundred years, it has been utilized by children with epilepsy. That's sort of how this diet kind of came about. Um, they, they determined that this particular way of eating would help children with epilepsy have fewer seizures and have less severe seizures. There are many forms of keto diet and there are a lot of keto experts out there and a lot of keto products out there, but not all experts, not all products are created equal. And so I just hope through this challenge that we will help create some awareness and um, help you develop a knowledge base so that you can make informed decisions that are right for you. The keto diet can be very challenging for most people to follow, and many people give up on it before they actually receive the benefits of that diet. Now, we want to have realistic expectations. You can't expect to lose 30 pounds in 10 days. That's not realistic, and it's not something that we would even want you to do. So I'm gonna give you some information on how you can make small adjustments to your lifestyle to improve and optimize your results. This challenge is all about creating awareness and giving you a firm foundation so that you can make the decisions that are right for you going forward. We're all so different. Our metabolisms are different. Our family histories are different. Our DNA is different. Our lifestyles are different. Our way of eating could be different. And there's no one size fits all. One of the things that I want for this group is to be a judgment-free zone. 
where you can feel free to express your opinions and you can feel free to explore the path that's right for you, even if that's very different than the one that someone else chooses to So some people may choose to be strict keto, where they really focus on eating really healthy foods that are natural and they're counting their macros and they're keeping those macros very precisely within that keto framework. Other people may choose to be dirty or lazy keto, where they're maybe relying more on some processed foods, but still keeping their macros within that keto guideline, or maybe they're drinking exogenous ketones and maybe just living a low carb lifestyle. There's a, a full range of options and they're all valid. Um, what we want to do is just to make sure that we're a little bit better than we were the day before. So I don't know what this journey will look like for you, but I'm excited to step alongside you to give you some information, to give you some guidelines, to give you some options so that you can choose a lifestyle that will be sustainable for you going forward. I don't want it to feel like you're always on a diet or always monitoring every single thing that you're eating, unless that's a lifestyle that you choose. For me, that's not a lifestyle I would choose. I don't want to have to track everything that I eat, but I do want to be aware of what I'm eating and I want to be aware of the effect and the impact that those foods and drinks have on my body. Information is power and I want to give you information so that you feel empowered to make the decision that is right for you. So in this challenge, we're going to learn how to look at labels a little more closely. What things do we need to look for? What um, ingredients maybe need to set off a red flag for us? What are some sweetener options? Um, so we're gonna become more aware consumers so that when we purchase something and we consume it, we know what that impact will be on our body. We're also gonna learn about other things. We're gonna talk about hydration. We're gonna talk about electrolytes. We're gonna talk about bone broth. We're gonna talk about some of these things that you might not have ever thought of before. We're gonna talk about things like portion size. We're gonna talk about strategies for eating out. I love to eat out. I'm a very social person, and my husband and I are empty nesters, and we love to eat out. So we'll talk about some of those common pitfalls that are in restaurants and how you can avoid them and strategies for being successful even as you eat out at restaurants. And even though we're not going to get specific into the macros here, I do want you to kind of understand some of the food choices that are better choices on a keto or low carb lifestyle. So we'll talk about different fruit choices. We'll talk about different fats that you might want to ingest. So we will cover some of the items, but it's more of a generalized approach, more of an awareness because honestly, a lot of people don't want to spend their life counting macros. Now, if you're one that likes that and you like to do those carb manager apps and you like to see those graphs, those pie charts, that's awesome. Go for it. But that's not something a lot of people will do, at least not long term. And sometimes people will do that for a short amount of time to develop that awareness. But I'm just going to try to give you a shortcut for some awareness that you can have going forward that even if you aren't tracking your macros, that will help you make better decisions as you go out to eat in restaurants and as you are doing your grocery shopping. And finally, I know we're gonna have a lot of fun together. So we will be learning, but it's going to be fun and we're going to learn from each other. I'm going to ask you all to do certain tasks and to post them in this group so that other people can benefit from what you found, including me, I love to learn. So one of the things I wanted to talk about on this first day of our challenge is the food pyramid. Now I may be showing my age here, I'm almost 50, but I grew up with a food pyramid and it looked something like this. Now I can put a picture of this in the comments so that you can see it more up close. But I printed this off from choosemyplate.gov, so a government site. Um, I think back in the 70s is when they really came out with the food pyramid of what they were encouraging us to eat and how the government was telling us to eat to optimize our health. At the very bottom, the biggest portion of the pyramid is the portion for bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. Out of that food group, they wanted us to eat six to 11 servings every day. What do those sound like to you? Hmm? Sounds like carbs. Yep, breads, pastas, uh, crackers. Like it's no wonder there's an obesity epidemic, right? And that diabetes is on the rise because this is what we were told to do if we were watching our health. Crazy, all right? And then on the next line, it was kind of split in half, three to five servings of vegetables. Vegetables, pretty good. Okay, some are better than others, but pretty good. And the fruit group, two to four servings. Now we'll talk about fruit later on um, in the challenge, so I'm not gonna go into that um, very much here. But I would like for you to start thinking about food as being, fruit as being nature's dessert, okay? Just because it grows on a tree or it grows out in nature doesn't necessarily mean it's a free-for-all. 
That's all I'm going to say. We'll cover more later. Um, and then up here they had a milk and cheese yogurt group, two to three servings a day. Meat, poultry, fish, dry beans, eggs, and nuts group up here, two to three servings. Um, and then fats and oils up here, the very smallest portion used sparingly. Right? Does that sound like a keto diet to you? I mean, this is all carbs. Breads, rice, pasta, right? Vegetables, some carbs, but the green leafy carbs are good carbs. Fruit, pretty carb heavy. Nuts, some of them can be carbish. Some of them can be really good keto. Dry beans, carbs, okay? Milk, yogurt, and cheese. Now, dairy can be inflammatory for a lot of people. That might be something that you kind of have to decide on an individual basis. Um, but how many of you have heard, drink low-fat milk, use low-fat cheese, right? Low-fat yogurt. Have you ever looked at low-fat yogurt? We'll look at those labels here um, in this challenge. Some interesting stuff. And then the fact that fats and oils are to be used sparingly. I thought this was a really interesting blast from the past, and this should definitely stay in the past. Okay, so part of your challenge for today is to, in the comments, as I said, share a little bit about your keto journey, where you live, what you're looking to get out of this keto journey, what your goals are, what your experience has been so far, if any, with a keto lifestyle. And then the other part of your challenge is, okay, maybe you can find a picture of a keto-friendly food pyramid, or if you just want to find a fun meme or a GIF, GIF, I don't know how to say that, G-I-F, um, about carbs that we can all enjoy, um, you can put that in the comments too. So those are just some fun things to help you move along your journey. Thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow.